perfect day for the road The blue sky will take us home We'll take it easy, we'll take it slow It's a good day for the road If you had to do this year round, you you wouldn't do it. <laughs> it's too much work and you're walking through the woods, carrying buckets, collecting every day around four o'clock, boiling till nine or 10 o'clock at night. With all that, I still end up gaining five or 10 pounds during the season because I'm eating mom and Mary Esther's homemade food every night and it's always good and it always you're always hungry. Um, but it's fun to see. They And this is, this is kind of the highlight of mom and dad's social uh, life here. You know, their friends come over and uh, people can't wait to come back next year when it starts again. So we, we've gone to a, a smaller tap. We use a 5 16 drill bit on a cordless drill. And we're drilling a hole probably only inch and a half, two inches into the tree. Um, you only need to be into the sapwood. By definition, if you want sap, you don't need to be in the heartwood. We use a, a plastic spile that is a little tube with a hook on it that uh, we tap into the tree with a hammer and then hang a pail on that. When the temperature's right for the tree to start running, um, we capture a little bit of the sap as it's rising up the tree. This is one of the few things left that if you do it the way we do it, that people still get together. Everybody that comes seems to enjoy it and want to do it uh, another year. We don't, it isn't really a money maker, it's, it's more for fun than it is to make money. Usually, uh, <laughs> the time we get done with Gordon's wood service, we've, uh, we lose a little money, but that's all right. We really enjoyed the, the get together. For my dad to be doing this at 81 years old and still out going, it's like each year, and my mom, you know, they're just amazing. Um, you can see just from following how much how much uh, work is involved, and, and um, so, but it's neat. Like I said, you can't do it without the help that we've had. It just seemed to be like something I should do, so I, started with uh, just collecting and uh, in that year I collected and and then started filling jugs and it just kind of evolved from there now this is the second year of tapping and I do the same thing I'll be putting wood in the fire if they need it or just help that's mostly what I'm doing I just help at my age I remember being a small child on the farm and being around when they when they husk corn they fill silo they buzzed wood together. These were all occasions when the neighbors got together and, and helped. And I know it was a lot of work for them, but to me it was a, was, a, was a fun time as a child looking at it. And so it's full of good memories. And uh, to some extent, we've reproduced that back here with uh, getting together and people coming and wanting to come and wanting to help. So yeah, it, it, it feels real good. I guess the, the origin of it started probably Christmas 2001. Mom and Dad started talking about building a cabin. 
And then the idea was, well, if we're going to have a cabin, it'd be cool to have a sugar shack to make syrup. So January of 2002, we were uh, putting posts in frozen ground and, and building a sugar shack. The history of maple syrup on this farm goes back to the uh, to the 1860s, really. One of the things they uh, they did to, to help supplement their income would have been to tap the trees and make uh, maple sugar. I came across the uh, an interesting document from uh, from one of the ancestors of the farm, his probate, and there on the bottom of that list, it was interesting. I saw uh, 250 maple syrup pails, and then there was also a, a cauldron kettle. They would call it and that's what they would have used to, uh, to boil the, the sap in to make syrup or sugar. When he passed, this, uh, this 40 acres uh, was handed down to his daughter, who was the, uh, uh, the wife of the people that built this farm into what it was, uh, the Sprague family. And the Sprague family uh, you know, became the Vlasius family over time. And this whole area was there one time, even when I was younger, you could name five or six sugar bushes, we called them, around here, this area that, uh, that were actively used. The sugar bush is actually a, a collection of, of maple trees. Anytime you have a group of, of maple trees together that they use to make maple syrup in, they call it a sugar bush. It might have been the first year we were boiling and uh, it was later in the season, the windows were open, it was warm. And I'm, I was at the pan boiling and all of a sudden through the window comes this glob of wet, mud, mud covered leaves and right into the pan, splash. Oh my grandson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were wearing their, their knee boots and they were in a big puddle where the, now where the addition stands for the uh, canning room. But that was a big mud puddle and they had sticks and they were digging up wet leaves and flinging them. They said they were fishing. Just, just got lucky. Yeah, they were fishing. They just got lucky and one came sailing right through the window into the syrup. Yeah, they couldn't have done it again if they wanted mm -hmm. to. Well, well, those are all good times. We've had panic times too. <laughs> the older gentleman we bought our equipment from originally said there's two kinds of people. Those who have burnt the pan and those who lie about it. And We've all had a hand in burning the pan. Now, I haven't ruined one, but we've scorched him. Our pan, our boiler, can evaporate about 100 gallons an hour. On a good day, years ago, we would collect 14 or 1500 gallons, which meant 14 or 15 hours of boiling. With the addition of the reverse osmosis machine that Dad added four or five years ago, 14 hours of boil now is down to four or five hours. This RO has cut the burning time right in half. Without any of this equipment, it was a big job making maple syrup. So our process now uh, is we're, we're collecting, we're pumping it into a storage tank, and then from that storage tank, we're pumping into a reverse osmosis. We're pushing sap through that filter, and the water is getting through, the sugar isn't. So we throw away what gets through the filter, we keep what doesn't go through the filter. Uh, which concentrates the sugar in the sap. That cuts down tremendously on the wood we use and the amount of time we spend boiling. Our concentrate is then pumped over to our stainless steel storage tank. That storage tank then feeds the evaporator. Gravity feeds down into what's called a steam away. There's float valves that keep the level where we want it goes down to the lower pan and just gets steadily sweeter as it's making its way through the kind of a maze of, of paths it has to go through in the stainless steel pan. After the fresh syrup is produced at the evaporator, we bring it over and we run it through a filtration system, which is charged with a air pump pushing it through and putting it into the canner, which keeps the sap at 180 degrees to 190 degrees, which is perfect for bottling. Companies typically do some type of premium for their customers. We started making maple syrup and decided, why don't we share this with our customers? And I joke with them that I've created a lot of syrup snobs over the years. They take it home to their kids and feed it to them. And all of a sudden the kids don't want the uh, store-bought syrup anymore. They want some of the syrup from the fancy bottle. We also give a quart of syrup to all the employees. 
that wasn't quite as big a deal when it was 16 or 18 employees. Now we're about 200, so we had to ramp up the syrup production to keep up with that. It's not a great business model because we give away most of the product, but we have a lot of fun with it. Today we're going to do something called the gathering of the sap and bring it in to be boiled. We start about 4 o'clock and we'll have anywhere from 10 to 15 people, hopefully, that'll come and help with it. We kind of have a core of people that are always here. A lot of them are retired guys that just look forward to this because it gives them something to do. And then there's usually a different group of people, just volunteers. We had a couple of school classes come back. Um, we had an Amish family, just different people that are interested in it and they want to do a gathering. We uh, have a 300 gallon tank we pull through the woods for the tractor on pretty good trails so it's, it's not bad for anybody wanting to walk through. We're still using pails as opposed to those using lines and vacuum to bring it in. It isn't too bad a, a process. Buckets are, are kind of the easy way for us to do it. I mean on, on some nights we'll have, oh goodness, 20 or 30 people sometimes <laughs> running around with buckets. Typically, we'll do the front half of the woods. That usually fills a trailer or close to it on a good day. And then we go, we dump that into the uh, storage tank at the, at the shack. And then we do the back half of the woods. We'll probably get anywhere from 800 to 1,000 gallon out of the woods today. After being cooped up all winter, it's a chance to get out and, and just kind of run free. Um, I've got a couple granddaughters and my um, older granddaughter, who will be four, um, she loves to come out into the woods and um, we'll go tree to tree and check and see if there's sap in the buckets. We have a, the trailer hooked on the back of the tractor, so if kids come and they're not familiar with, you know, country life or um, farm life, you know, they get a chance to ride on the sap wagon, we call it, and they have a lot of fun with that. My grandson, Tommy, he's been out here since he was two, probably. He takes off at a dead run for the nearest bucket on a tree, pulls it off, dumps it into his collection pail, and comes uh, running back, and that was, that was pretty cool. Especially that my grandson did it fast and with reckless abandon. Jim broke a bucket, pal. Jim broke a bucket. Even when we first started this, the four of us that are partners, that's uh, my son, John, and Mike and Dave, our son-in-laws, this family has worked together beautifully and uh, those, are, those are especially good times. Last question for you. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want people to get out of, out of this when they watch this documentary? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, You know, we live in a fairly modern age and, and uh, going hard, doing doing business. This is a this is relaxing. Physically, it's hard. Mentally, this is very relaxing. Um, it's enjoyable to be out, you know, outside. Um, it's neat. Uh, my dad really appreciates, and I can I'm getting old enough now where I understand it. Having having the kids and the grandkids around, um, I'm fortunate that my kids are fairly close, and I get to see them often. Um, Unless you got anything else you want to say? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I guess if they, if they get something out of it that, uh, you know, look for a hobby themselves, something that involves family and, and friends and, and traditions. If you're ever curious about it, come over and come over and see us. We're always looking for volunteers, fresh legs and carry some buckets, you know. Spend some time out in the woods and, and come in for supper because it's it's always good. Why do we do maple syrup out here every year? That's a good question. You know, uh, for me, uh, it would be the, the, the gather in the getting together after a, after a cold winter and, you, and, the, and the sun starts to warm up and the you know, it's almost like the, the blood starts flowing again. You want to get outside, you want to be out in the, in the, in the warm sun. First sign of spring is, you know, you do a maple 
people stir up. Yep. And then and then the people start showing up, and you don't know who's going to show up at any given at any given day. You know, it's it's going to be a, it could be some friends from church, it could be some friends from work, it could be a, the acquaintances you've never met. Yeah. This and is the rite of passage out here. The wonder of it, it's just amazing. You know, we take it for granted, and people that just go and they don't realize that we take sap and make syrup that it's really that simple. You know that it's you know you can take that sap out of that tree and do that and people just totally get mystified about that. And they're like, really you guys do that? I think I emphasized enough. You talk about a reason for doing this, just doing it has been a great experience. And with these three guys here that have been in business for years and uh, just uh, still back here together. There's something that you just, uh, I don't think a lot of people, a lot of families capture. I have great grandchildren coming now. It's been uh, one of the greatest family experiences. Even the cabin, just having it here. We have Christmas here now. And uh, quite often Easter Sunday dinner is back here. Everybody seems to enjoy it and want to come back to the woods. Let's get happy.